Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Entrepreneurial Lunch and Learn offered by the Lawrence Enfield Center for Entrepreneurship at Brook College. Welcome back to those of you who have previously attended a Lunch and Learn session. For those of you who have not joined us before, I'm Marlene Lee King. I'm the exec Executive Director of the Field Center. The Field Center for Entrepreneurship is a multifaceted division at Brook College offering free services and programs for the entrepreneurial community. Today's Lunch and Learn webinar is brought to you by the Nate app. The Nate, the Nate app is an e-commerce app that's changing the future of online shopping by allowing users to purchase any item from any, anywhere with only two clicks. The folks at Nate will demonstrate their online tools and how it could work for your business. Welcome, Nick. Thank you so much for being here today to share with us uh, the tools and the opportunities that Nate app can provide for uh, our entrepreneurs. Of course. Thanks for having me. And uh, thanks to everybody that's joined. I'm super excited to chat with you all. Um, before I jump into it, a little bit about myself and um, what I do here. My name is Nick. Um, I've been at Nate for about a year and a half now. Um, and when I started at Nate, we were a lot smaller company than we are now. We're still, you know, relatively small compared to other companies, but we've definitely grown since then. So when I first joined, we were about 20 people. At the time, I was doing <clears throat> a lot of our like content creation and creative design work. So we did a lot of the branding at the early stages. Um, we did like all of our advertisements, things like that. Um, and then eventually, uh, as you do in startup uh, life and startup world, you start cycling through a lot of different things and you get your hands on a lot of different projects as well. Um, but now I'm more focused on brand activations, um, brand partnerships, experiential activations, and things of that nature. Um, so I work on the marketing team and we're a pretty small marketing team of about eight people. Um, but I like to think we do a lot, which is really exciting. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me and what I do here at Nate. Um, so I have a presentation for you guys, uh, which talks just a bit about the company and the e-commerce space as well. Um, I don't like to hear myself talk all that much. So at any point, anybody has questions, this can definitely be more of a dialogue or anything like that. Um, if you want to throw something in the chat, feel free. Um, I'll answer any questions that you guys have. Um, and then at the end, we could talk about whatever you guys would like as well. If there's any more questions, anything like that. Um, but with that, let me jump into the presentation. Give me one second. All righty, here we go. So I always like to kick these kind of presentations off um, whenever we do these, just with a little bit of info on Nate, the company, and also the product. So let me dive into that. So as Marlene said, Nate is a new e-commerce app changing the future of online shopping. Um, so we're ventured backed, which just means that we have pretty much institutional investors. We, currently, we don't make any revenue. So that's how, start, how a lot of startups survive. <clears throat> uh, we just finished our Series A funding, which was really exciting. That means we can last a little bit longer and do more fun things and we all have jobs another day. Um, and we live to see another day. So that's great. So there's a few key app features um, that the product offers. Um, and the first one here says universal three tap checkout. And they really should all say universal, but I didn't feel like I needed to put that, you know, five different times. But right now there's really five primary features of the app. So that's the three tap checkout, the list creation, sending gifts, buy now, pay later, and purchase privacy. Um, so I'll dive into each of these features and how these kind of all relate to the e-commerce space. But before I do that, I kind of want to just give another kind of reference of or scenario of what Nate is, because just saying that it's a new e-commerce app or it's a universal shopping app or anything like that, it's a bit hard to grasp. And being that this is a new um, product, it's not the easiest thing for consumers to understand. So that's always a, a big barrier for us, especially in the e-commerce space. So with that, let me give you guys a little bit of a reference. So... We're going to put on our imagination caps right now, and we're pretty much going to imagine that we have a, an assistant, right? So here's our assistant. He's there. Now, let's say we want our assistant to go and buy something for us. It could be anything. It could be a t-shirt. It could be a pair of headphones. It could be a microwave, whatever you want. Your assistant goes to the store, buys that product for you, comes back with it. I'm sorry, I messed up. It could be a t-shirt. could be AirPods. could even be a Tesla as well. 
So your assistant goes to the store, buys that for you. Everybody's happy. You have your new product. Um, you have your new thing. You're excited about it. Your assistant gets to keep their job. Everybody's happy, right? Um, so pretty much the way, the reason I like to use this analogy is because Nate is often referred to as a digital assistant. Um, and that's really the best way to think of it. The only difference is that Nate is a machine and not a human. And Nate's going to online stores and transacting on your behalf for you. So not only is it transacting on your behalf at these online stores, it's doing all those other uh, things that we mentioned before in the key features. So it's buying things for you. It's saving products for you. It's creating lists for you. It's sending those lists to your friends for you. It's sending your friends gifts. Um, pretty much everything that's in the online shopping like process and flow, Nate can kind of streamline that for you. So that's really the, the key feature. And what makes that really unique for us as a company and for the product itself is that it's truly universal. And that's why it's important that it's a machine because this machine has seen pretty much more websites than any human has. And um, being that it's powered by AI, every time it sees a new website, it gets smarter and smarter. So the more websites that Nate sees, um, the smarter and better and faster it gets um, for consumers. So it kind of works in like a progressive manner. You can imagine that. So let's dive into the key features now and how these are all kind of touching it on the e-commerce space and what problems they're solving. <clears throat> so the first one, we have universal checkout. So why is this important to the e-commerce world and the kind of that industry in general? Um, many consumers find checkout really, really tedious, especially when you're doing it from your mobile phone, right? Um, we spend majority of our time on our cell phones but um, an interesting little snippet is that majority of shopping done online is done on a desktop, um, which as you guys know, like I'm on my phone all the time. I do work from my phone. I'm texting my friends, doing, going on my social medias, things like that, I'm spending a lot of time there. But the one thing I'm not doing there is my shopping just because the interface is really bad. It's really hard to go through these like cart processes on my phone since the screen's small. There's lots of information I have to type in and things like that. So that alone deters me from wanting to buy something whenever I see it on my phone, because then I have to go get my laptop, I have to get my wallet, have to do all of that, and then re-go through that process again on, on my laptop or whatever I'm doing. So whenever that happens, um, I'm sure for you guys as well, it pretty much decreases your, your desire to go and buy that product, which for a merchant is really annoying and really bad. So pretty much every second that a consumer has between when they see a product and when they decide to actually go through and buy that product, their purchasing intent goes down. So this uh, is horrible for conversion rates for merchants. Um, it's not fun for the consumer either. So how does Nate solve this problem? Nate basically gives you the same three uh, tap process across any product or any website. You just tap share, you tap Nate, and you tap buy. And that's it. And that's why we kind of call an assistant, because just like you would tell your assistant, hey, can you go and buy this? You're sharing a product with Nate, and then Nate is going and buying it for you. So no matter what you're buying, whether it's that t-shirt, whether it's those headphones, whether you're buying a Tesla, Nate works. And you can see here on the right, this is a little screenshot um, from just the user interface that you would see on any website. And you can literally buy a Tesla with Nate, which is pretty cool. Um, and this kind of image here in the name as well, it depends on what you're buying, but if you're buying a t-shirt, you would see the t-shirt there. If you're buying, you know, headphones, you see the headphones, if you're buying whatever else, doesn't matter. Nate can do it for you. So that's the first key feature and really the, the main driving factor, um, of why Nate is so unique. <clears throat> so next we have list sharing and why this is important. So I can create lists or anybody can create lists on Nate. Um, for pretty much any products they want, whether I'm making a list, you know, for my skincare, I'm making a list for vacation I'm going on of, you know, clothes I want to buy, I'm making a list of apartment decor, um, it doesn't matter. And this is where the universality comes in again, because you could save any product. So whether, like I just said, you're buying clothes for vacation, you're buying apartment decor, you're buying whatever else, you can create lists and you could share them with friends. So the great thing about list sharing is that it kind of takes out the whole um, issue that we come across when we're being bombarded with ads and algorithms trying to insist on what we want. So it's really bringing the human element of shopping back into the online shopping experience. I know that, for example, for me, if, you know, let's say Amazon recommends a book I should read based off of my past purchasing history, it's really not that um, personal to me. And I'm not going to take it to heart that much because I know it's just being 
aimed at me by some type of algorithm. It could be good, it could be, you know, bad, whatever. But if a friend, you know, says, hey, like I have this book list, I think you'll be really into it. You should check it out. I'll be much more inclined to go and buy that, uh, buy products from that list just because somebody I know and somebody that knows me is sharing that list with me and recommending those things to me. So it's a really, again, great way for one, like friends to friends and people to people to share things with each other. And it's also great for brands too, because they can curate their own lists. They can, um, like they can have influencer curate lists for their brands, which we do a lot. Um, and you could just kind of blast these out to whoever you want, whether that's through text message, whether it's through Instagram, whether through, you know, Facebook, pretty much wherever you could send somebody a link, you could share a list with them, which is um, really, really useful for, as a consumer and for brands as well. So next is gifting, which I will touch on something else a bit, but pretty much what gifting uh, solves is pretty much the need to go and ask your friend, hey, like, what's your address? Have you moved apartments? Anything like that. You no longer need to remember that or even write it down. You don't have to have their address at all when you're gifting with Nate. All you have to do is find, you know, whatever product you think your friend will love. You tap share, you tap Nate, you change the shipping to ship to a friend. Then you can see down here, Nate creates this little gift link for you. And you can send that gift link to your friend. And all they have to do is tap that gift link, accept the gift, and then the gift is on, uh, on the way to them. So like I said, you don't need their address. It just takes that uh, struggle and that friction point out, which again is just handy for consumers because you know I've had to do this countless times where I'm asking friends if they've moved or something like that. Nate just kind of erases that for you. And while we're on this topic, um, I'll mention that everybody here, um, someone that I work with, Julia, will be sending you guys um, a gift for attending after this. So it'll be in your email. So keep an eye out for that. All you have to do to accept the gift is just download Nate, create your account, um, tap the gift link, and then you'll have an option to accept the gift, and then it'll be on its way to you. So you guys can see um, the power of you know gift linking uh, in person, which is really awesome. All right, so now um, we're going to talk about buy now, pay later. So for those of you that don't know what buy now, pay later is, it pretty much just allows you to you know make a larger purchase. Uh, in four installments. So if you're buying something for a hundred bucks, you could pay it in $25 installments every two weeks over eight weeks, basically. Um, and there's really a lot of big players in this space right now. Um, some of them you've probably heard, there's Klarna, there's Affirm, there's Afterpay. And those are all huge players. And this is such a, um, a big like feature and almost a, an industry in its own right now, um, because it's pretty much allowing people to to have another way of financing things without having to go through their credit card, without having to, you know, mess up their credit or anything like that, which for people like, you know, college students or even me who's, you know, newly out of college, there's definitely some things that I want to buy that are a bit pricier and, you know, pay later is just an awesome way to, to finance those things. Um, but the problem with this is that few, very few companies offer this and the companies that do offer this require integration with merchants. So I'll take something like Klarna, for example, pretty much how they operate is they have to go to brands, let's say like Nike or Urban Outfitters or whoever else there is on their platform, and they have to cut a deal with them. And when they make this deal, they're taking um, money from the merchant. So they're taking a cut of the transaction. And there's all these other fees and integration that just require heavy lifting to get them onto the platform. Um, which is just a pain for merchants and it cuts into the merchants uh, revenue as well, which, you know, for them, they're not fans of um, how Nate gets around. This is being that Nate's universal and it works everywhere as a company, we're able to finance that buy now pay later purchase. So we're not taking a cut from the merchant at all. So the merchant keeps all the money, which is great for them. The user gets to use buy now pay later, which is also great for them. And we also don't charge any added fees when you're using buy now pay later, which other companies like, you know, Klarna, Affirm, Afterpay might do. So it works everywhere. All you have to do is just change the, the buying option that you want. You could see here, it says no strings, no interest, no stress. Just tap share, tap Nate, tap buy. Change it to buy now, pay later, and you're good to go. Um, and the last feature that we'll talk about is purchasing privacy. So I'm sure everybody here has probably seen that Netflix doc, um, The Social Dilemma, I think it was called. But basically that whole documentary is about how these media companies um, are basically selling all of our information and data to advertisers, which is why 
when let's say you go online and you're looking at like a bicycle, you're going to start seeing, you know, bicycle ads pop up all over the place. You're going to be entered into basically this ginormous advertising funnel where they're trying to get uh, you to buy things, which is really, really annoying. And for some people, it's kind of unethical for these big companies to be selling our data. So depending where you stand on that, um, it could be problematic to you. It could be not. But for a lot of people, it's a big problem. So one unique thing about Nate that we kind of don't really talk about much in our own advertising is this purchasing privacy feature. So what happens when you purchase with Nate is basically Nate becomes the point of sale uh, merchant. So what that means is you're paying Nate for the product or Nate's going first to the merchant buying the product and then you're buying the product from Nate essentially. So what happens when you make a purchase is Nate creates a unique virtual credit card that's just used one time. It uses that credit card to trans the, to, to charge the merchant to buy uh, whatever it is that you're buying. Once that's bought, your credit card gets charged to the virtual credit card. So at no point in this process does the merchant see your information. They don't get any of your information. So it's all under lock and key in our own uh, like databases and warehouses and things like that. So it's all safe with us, which is uh, really, really great. So every, everything is pretty much just, you know, it's private with us. You're not, your data is not being sold. We never uh, advertise within the app. So that means we don't use any algorithms to recommend you products or anything like that. That's why you'll see in a lot of our branding, if you follow us on social media, um, Nate, the brand never pushes out products. It's always a person doing it. So whether that's an influencer, whether it's a celebrity, whether it's some random person, it's always this person pushing out their favorite products, recommending products and things like that. As a company, we don't push product. Um, so that kind of wraps up my uh, little presentation about the e-commerce space and how Nate kind of plays a role in that. Um, so with that, I'll open up the floor to any questions that you guys might have and we could talk about whatever you'd like. Uh, thank you so much, Nick. Um, we do have a couple questions. Uh, one of our participants actually tried to do what you were recommended and for sharing, and she was finding a bit of a glitch uh, that it was only using Safari web. Is this the only option for mobile or using a computer is better? Yeah, so right now Nate's only available for iOS. Um, the reason for that is that um, from a business standpoint, our target demographic is Gen Zers and primarily Gen Zers in New York. So that's really anybody in the age range of like 17 to 26 or so. Um, and most of those users are, I or most of those people, sorry, are iPhone users. Um, and by default, iPhone users have Safari. So that's why um, Safari was the first browser that we built out on. But we are working on building desktop extensions and Android as well. Um, one of the questions that I have is if you have your own merchant site, is there a way to integrate your site or Nate together or also create um, some sort of link for folks to find Nate on a merchant site and use that as a gifting option? Let's say they haven't found Nate prior to this. Yeah, so Nate is built for consumers. So, <clears throat> sorry. So we don't have the need to integrate with any type of merchants and merchants don't have the need to integrate with us. If you're a merchant, <clears throat> what you can do is create your own Nate account and you can, let's say your brand is called, I don't know, like Apple brand. You could create a Nate account, name it Apple brand. And then you could, let's say you wanna create lists, you wanna send people gifts. Um, once you do that, you can create the list from that account. You could share that link or put that link into your website and it'll automatically propagate. So it's really easy. It doesn't require any heavy lifting or integration. It's just a matter of creating a Nate account and creating a list or sending a gift or whatever it is that you want to do. Okay. What, are, what's, what are new features coming out for Nate app? <clears throat> yeah, so we actually just released a really exciting new feature called Nate Wallet. So basically what this allows you to do is upload cash from your bank account directly to your Nate account. Um, but the reason that that's exciting for consumers is because with that, we released a $50 signup bonus. So when you sign up to Nate today um, and you link your wallet or you link your bank account to your wallet, you get $50 to spend wherever you want. So it's $20 spent on your first purchase, 15 on your second and 15 on your third. And being that Nate's universal, whether you're buying you know, a notebook, whether you're buying a desk, whether you're buying 
close, doesn't matter. That uh, $20 and those $15 will be applied to whatever purchases you make. When is that rolling out? It's rolled out right now. It just actually rolled out uh, about two weeks ago, probably. Um, so that's really exciting. And to let you guys in on a, on a bit of a sneak peek of, oh, sorry, sneak peek of what's coming in the future um, is now that the wallet is released, we'll also be allowing 5% cash back on purchases made from your lists. So for example, if you create a list of whatever and you share it to your friend and your friend sees something in the list that they really like and they buy it, you'll get 5% cash back on that purchase added to your wallet. So it's a pretty easy way to make some, a uh, little bit of extra cash and just, you know, get some money while you sleep. Does that also apply to when you create the Nate wallet, does it also apply to the feature of when you make a purchase and uh, I guess a, a dummy account or credit card number are created to make the merchant? purchase, that's the throwaway, and the Nate information, that's your real information, sticks within the Nate wallet. Is that still the same feature? So not, not exactly. So the wallet and the privacy layer are two separate things. The privacy layer is there no matter whatever way you're purchasing, whether you're purchasing with a debit card, whether you're purchasing with your credit card, whether you're purchasing with your bank account that you linked, that privacy layer is always there. The wallet is just the term that we call it because you can add cash to it. And that's when you're linking your bank account to it. So you need your uh, bank account links to, for example, make a pay later purchase and you need to link your bank account to redeem the $50 as well. But no matter how you purchase, the privacy layer is still there. I have a really good question from one of our participants. Yeah. Um, does this also apply to grocers or food industry merchants? Yeah, so any, anything that has a product online and has a checkout process, Nate can do that for you. Um, so if there's food that you can order online, then yeah, you could totally buy it on Nate. Um, I've ordered Gold Belly with Nate before. Somebody ordered their like pickup Starbucks order before with Nate, which was pretty cool. Um, so literally, as long as you need to check out online with that product, you can use Nate for it. Um. I don't have any additional questions. If, if there's anyone in the participants that has any additional questions, please go ahead and put it into the chat. In the meantime, Nick, thank you so much for sharing the Nate app with us. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Some of the features that you are rolling out and you total, you have currently now, and especially gifting, because I think this is a really easy way to avoid um, getting some, uh, getting ahead of the gifting options and not giving away the little secret before it's already ready to go. Um, for those of you on this call, you probably saw and Nick mentioned that everyone will receive a gift from the Nate app. Um, just make sure that your email addresses are aligned with uh, your Zoom accounts. So that way, um, when you get that email from me, I will be able to also share it with the Nate folks so that way you can receive your gift link, right? That's what we're getting. Yeah, exactly. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, it'll be a fun little gift. And then since you already have Nate download, if you link your uh, bank account to your wallet, you have 50 bucks, spend that on whatever you want, send some gifts to people, do what you want with it. But yeah, thank you guys so much. It was a pleasure talking to you and thanks for the great questions as well. Um, if you need anything from me, I'll drop my email in the chat for everybody. It's just yeah. at nate.tech. Pretty easy to guess if you don't remember it. But yeah, thank you guys. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you so much for everyone here. Um, I will be sending out the recording of today's session with the um, slides, which I will get from Nick later. And hope to see you all in two weeks for our next Lunch and Learn session, which is presented by City, where we're, go we're going to learn how City Builder by City was developed for to inform investments that support communities through data and insights. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Have a good day.